one of the things you know I find if you're playing other chord changes, really to be familiar with moving around the neck and seeing things different ways. So if I was playing like a two five one line, let's say I'm scanning these changes, C minor into F seven, going to B flat major, so a two five one in B flat, right? So I might be playing a line that might do this. Or, or, so if you see when I do all those, I'm playing lines that cover different parts of the neck, even though I'm playing over the same chord changes, right? So this means that depending on the line I want to play, I'm going to be using different fingerings to outline the chord structure that I'm playing over and seeing that chord on the fingerboard different ways, depending on which line I want to play. So I might see a C minor line this way around, where the arpeggio would be here, rather than that way around, right? Because my line... So that way, that particular line, I went up through this C minor idea. Now, what I did for the second chord, the F7, was I substituted an F7 for a tritone dominant idea, a B7 line that I played. Now, don't worry too much about the harmony. We'll get into that in another lesson. It's more about just a fingering thing and seeing the neck, and I'll give you a cool little exercise. But I wanted to give you some context, so don't go to sleep. We'll get to it, all right? So, we've got the C minor, B7, and then I went up through a B7 line, which is kind of like derived from a Lydian dominant idea. There's a sharp 11 in this B7. All right, now, in order to do that, I'm seeing the C minor this way around, where the root of the C minor, this is really important, is on my pinky or fourth finger, right? There's the C there on the 15th fret of the A string. Yeah? But then when I move to the B7 idea, the tritone of F7, the B root that's adjacent to the C, I'm tending to see it this around with my second finger there, you see. So I'm moving from C minor here into B, into B flat major there, you see. So even though I'm going down a half step from C minor to B7 or F7, a tritone away, right? I'm actually moving up the fingerboard, effectively the way I'm seeing the neck. Don't forget, Support the channel, like, subscribe. If you want to donate, you can do the buy me a coffee thing. It all helps. And also check out my website. There's stuff to download there. And you can also contact me in terms of getting in touch for private lessons too. So when you're playing lines, this one too, check this one out. This is C minor to B7. Right, so. If you notice that the C minor, I'm actually playing the root C on the high C here, right? On the 17th fret of the G string, right? And then that E flat, the minor third of C, becomes the D sharp of B7 here, right? So I'm seeing these things across the neck, but now this is like an extended fingering to play a B major triad. Yeah, here's C minor, B, but what I did on the B was I came down third root minor or flat seven to the fifth, like that, and sharp 11, resolved da, 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 the third of my B flat one chord, right? So I'm seeing things different ways. So here's a cool little exercise to get you into this concept, right? We're just going to use the Dorian mode, which we're kind of like basing the vocabulary of that minor two chord around. And this is a really cool warm up and very easy. So, Dorian fingering, a classic Dorian finger, we'll do it the C Dorian here, right? Will be this C, D, E flat, F, pivot, G, A, B flat, C. Notice I move back a fret there forward a fret or up a fret there yeah c d e flat f pivot to the fourth finger g a b flat c and back slowly up and down same thing in reverse right 
Now what we could do is use an entirely different fingering to achieve the same one octave C Dorian. Start on my fourth finger, watch this. And lo and behold, there's no pivot, there's no back and forth this fingering, which is kind of useful too. So I go C with my fourth finger, starting on the same fret, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat, C, and reverse, C, B flat, A, G, F, E flat, D, C. Original fingering, alternate. Okay, now what I would recommend doing is play that ever in the neck in all keys, right? So you could just start off on the lowest available. Now obviously you're gonna run out of ways to play this at the bottom of the neck. You sometimes have to use open strings and so on. But once you can get to a position where you can play both fingerings in pairs, start it there. So you could easily start on an A here, right? You could go A Dorian with the alternate fingering. Then here. See what I mean? Say the notes. A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A. Don't shy away from doing it in reverse. It's harder to say the notes. A, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, right? Move up a half step B flat Dorian, right? So you can start either way with the orthodox fingering. Make sure you're thinking of the note names, not just the finger pattern, right? So B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, a flat, B flat, do it in reverse. B flat, A flat, G, F, E flat, D flat, C, B flat. Alternate fingering. Right? Up a half step, B Dorian. You could start it with the alternate fingering. C Dorian. C sharp. This way, what you can do is just work on all the keys. You do it chromatically through the cycle of force. I like that thing of working up chromatically up the neck. That's kind of cool. There's D alternate, E flat, see what I mean? E. Run that all the way up and down. Now, what this is getting you into is being able to see different chords, different modes, different arpeggios, just different ways on the fingerboard. It's really useful. So when I was demonstrating just those little lines at the beginning, I'm not playing the same lick in terms of position. You know, I'm seeing the chord. If I play a C minor this way. See, I started, I hammered on into from the nine into the minor third here. And this is playing over a C minor, right? And so this way I'm effectively playing the low C would be there, right? And the high C is under my first finger, right? Now, if I wanted to then play over an F7 from here, let's say I want to make it an F Lydian dominant idea, right? I'm not even looking at the finger, but I know under my hands I have C, D, E flat, D, C, B, A, G, F, E flat, D, C, B, A. So I've got a ton of notes here that I can use to outline that chord change, right? Yeah? So I don't need to start from the root, and I don't need to start on my first or my second finger, which is typically as bass players when we're playing like a riff. We, we, we've got our first or second finger always on the root of the chord we're outlining. You know what I mean if we're playing like... Or... One way or the other, it's probably going to be the first or the second finger, right? But that doesn't always work when we're playing lines, right? With chromatic passing notes when we're scanning through different chord changes. So this thing of seeing things in at least two different fingerings is always really good. This is a great simple exercise, which of course you could use for all of the modes, all your scales. There's always like at least two usable ways to play something. So check that out.